Yo, what up Street Togs there, Kim? So, a thought. What does it mean to live in today's uh, post-apocalyptic world? In today's uh, brave new world? Sorry, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit windy here. So, some, some basic thoughts. It looks like First of all, there's there's no people around. It's just it's just us, nature and the sun. So perhaps the the first thing is treating it kind of like I'm legend, like imagine that you're the last human alive. How would you keep yourself entertained? How would you keep yourself motivated? And how do you keep yourself uh, bored from being bored? So, I I can't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what I've been doing. So, in so far much as I can, I've been walking around as much as I can, getting as much natural air, fresh air, um, and just kind of seeing the world for myself. So, um, I've intentionally been not following the news. I've intentionally been just kind of using this chance to think more, to philosophize more, and uh, not to get, essentially not to get uh, influenced by the thinking of others. And I think maybe that's one of my superpowers is, I'm a very, like, I don't really care for the opinions of others too much. I care about my own opinion. And I think that's why I've been pretty immune to the news because I'm not really fearful, I'm not scared. Um, and I think I'm probably one of the most free-spirited or free-spirited th thinkers that I personally know, and that's one of my greatest joys in life. So I've just been, I've been walking a lot, I've been thinking a lot, and also just like philosophizing and think about the, the philosophy of sociology. So in today's brave new world, um, it's, it's a very interesting time to be alive because everything we're experiencing right now, you know, even if the disease comes and goes, whatever, it's going to profoundly change society. And it, it already has, like, even this notion of social distancing, I think long gone after, you know, COVID, well, let's say they find a cure or vaccine, whatever, it's still going to impact people for a long time. And who knows, maybe a lot of these industries, you know, airlines going to go defunct, cruise ships going to go defunct and stuff like that. We're going to see a lot of these businesses come and go. And so I find it just like a very interesting uh, opportunity right now to think about, you know, just the sociology thing. So who's going to be mostly protected? I think... Uh, I actually think institutions will be fine. I mean, like, anything that's government-supported, government-run, I think universities, for the most part, will be fine. Um, because, you know, at least in our lifetimes, I think people care enough about education. And, uh, and certainly uh, private, I think private schools, private institutions, like, currently we're ha here at um, uh, Brown University, they got a fucking huge war chest, so I think, you know, essentially institutions or schools or businesses with a big war chest of like saved up monies. I think I think they'll be fine. And I know at least for me as a private citizen, as long as I get food to feed myself with meat, and then meat is actually it's, this is actually the funny thing. Meat is the cheapest thing you could buy at least here. Like I go to the place called Stop and Shop, you could buy chicken quarters for 9 cents a pound. I'm like, yo, there's no better bang for the buck. Actually, no, no, even cheaper, ham. You buy ham for 79 cents a pound. This is insane, right? So, uh, you know, you're not going to starve to death. And it seems, at least in the context of, uh, it seems like at least in the context of, um, of uh, thinking about survival, you know, assuming you don't get COVID and die from it, then beyond that, then it's just like, do you have enough food to feed yourself? Then can you pay for rent? Then beyond that, everything else is like, I, I think I think we'll be fine. So, it 
so thinking about just like the future and the sociology of uh, today's world, obviously more things will become digital. I think actually right now is probably the best time you could create some sort of epic new technology. Even something I've been thinking about a lot, I mean, feel free to steal my idea, is I think, okay, I think this is my theory. The, the big cause of all of this uh, mass hysteria is essentially the product of tech companies. So it's not even tech companies, but just technology and the internet in general is because essentially the internet makes people or the internet or companies make money through advertising. I think the next big innovation with the internet is gonna be how can one make big profits or big income or big monies on the internet that doesn't rely on advertising. I mean, I think some companies, people are onto it with like subscription services. I mean, I think that's pretty smart. Um, you know, digital products, I think this is also pretty smart. Or like online workshops, online seminars, because this is what I think. So it's funny because we are actually doing this like uh, bar a class. It's kind of like, imagine like yoga meets ballet. But anyways, the, the basic gist of it was interesting because essentially with Barre, so in the, in the beginning of COVID when they started shutting everything down, they essentially, you know, did this live Barre class. And it was actually, it was actually really fun. Me and Cindy did it. And I was like, yo, I'd, I'd gladly pay like five bucks to do a, a live workout session because when you're working out with somebody, even though it's virtual, it was via Zoom and it was live, I actually felt more motivated to the, to the exercises than just doing a pre-recorded thing. So I thought to myself, wow, like this would be a great opportunity for people to start charging money for these live performances via the internets where the you know instructor or whoever could also interact and engage with you too. So, you know, we've already seen, you know, kind of futuristic visions of this, like, um, you know, the Netflix episode with Ashley O. It's like Miley, I think that was Miley Cyrus, right? But anyways, the basic notion is maybe us artists or us performers or us bloggers, the digital creators, we can start to profit by, yeah, doing online workshops, online courses, online stuff that's live and charge money for it. And it's very smart because then you become like infinitely scalable. So like for example, if I do a workshop, let's say I could have a workshop with 20 people, which is fine, but then the issue with that is, you know, there's only so many human beings or bodies or flesh that could fit in a room. Whereas with the internet, you're doing a live thing, live audience, you could in theory have a million people or a billion people concurrently experiencing, interacting with something. So I think, I think doing stuff via the internet live is gonna be, one of the interesting things we could do in the future, the things that could actually really kind of get people jazzed up and stuff like that. So think about live internet-based technologies. It could be a huge wave of the future. So kind of play around with Facebook Live or Instagram Live or YouTube Live. I personally am more of a proponent of like doing YouTube Live because at least you could easily record the content afterwards and I also kind of prefer more of the open platform but at the same time you know I think Facebook Live is actually pretty good too I mean Instagram Live I mean just 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 try it out and experiment with it but I think in so far much the thing I don't really understand right now is what platform is best or you know Zoom what platform is the best for you know monetizing and stuff like that so yeah it looks looks like one of the futures is uh live telecommuting video web conferencing things so rather than bemoaning the the downsides of life right now and the downsides of everything's being destroyed think about the upsides